Waco Real Estate Today with Nathan Embry. Sponsored by Kelly Realtors. I'm sitting here with Corey Digman, the king of downtown. <laughs> no. Corey, would you tell us a little bit about uh, your background? The in, king in Waco. Oh my goodness, I don't know if it's the king. Maybe the maybe the popper or the <laughs> the, the jester or some other things. Uh, yeah. Well, so I went to Baylor, at undergrad, grad school, moved back. I'm from Portland, Oregon, is where I'm from, and then I came back to Waco uh, to start the Waco Escape Rooms, and really my fascination with downtown wasn't due to anything out, it really be, the only thing it had to do with was because escape rooms were always built in urban areas and there weren't many at that time but the ones that did exist were downtown Austin downtown Dallas downtown Houston like none of them were in the suburbs anywhere and I don't that was just how they built them and so we were following suit because we were new and there was, this was a brand new industry, but we, we were just going to copy what other people were doing. So, uh, we looked at downtown Waco and this was September of 2015. So, th you know, there were no silos yet. There was no, there really, what really wasn't much of anything. So there was like a ton available, um, in downtown, you know, I don't know if you remember back then, but yeah. you know, there were buildings galore and, anybody was willing to kind of run a deal with you. Um, their whole thing was just like, you just do the build out, you know, we'll give you like a killer rent rate, but, uh, <laughs> is that phones? No. Um, and so that, that was like my first entry into downtown was cool. Older buildings going to take a lot of work to renovate. And so it wasn't really of a, of a price or like a cost problem. It was more of a time problem. When we, when I came back, we wanted to get going. You so, know, so that was one of your, <clears throat> like the first project was your escape rooms down here. Well, so it, it was, but it wasn't until later. So then we ended up going onto Lake air because we couldn't find a building that we could be up in time. Mm -hmm. So we started, you know, over by target and totally thought, oh, we're going to fail. This thing's not downtown. They're always supposed to be downtown. Uh, but then, you know, we just, and I've said this so many times before, we just stumbled upon, you know, the, the perfect street that all the suburbs, you have your Hewitt and Woodway people when they're driving to go to target, you know, they go down 84, they make a left on Lake air, they drove by our sign and then they go to target. And, uh, and so we got so many families that came out and played and that's really what propelled us. Um, it, it wasn't students at Baylor or students at MCC or TSCC. So it kind of, we kind of fell into it a little bit. Um, but then as, as fate had it, it went back. Uh, we went, <laughs> we went, we came back downtown later so uh now how many things how many businesses or buildings downtown do you have now um shoot. yeah good question um waco escape rooms waco pedal tours is technically downtown even though it doesn't really have a building per se i mean we have a manufacturing um warehouse that we so i guess that still counts but um waco acts that's three cultivate four um the new building on Washington, it's five. The Webster uh, property that I think we're going to talk about here uh, yeah. is six. So, and then here, so seven. Did and I say the escape room? Eight, another scene. No, seven maybe. I think I lost count. That's Somewhere in there. That's yeah, a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. So Jeez. that's why I and all my friends call you the king of downtown. <laughs> I don't know who else has eight different. Oh, we have an Airbnb downtown. Oh, do you really? Nine? Yeah, nine. Wow, yeah. You know, when I, when we started Startup Waco, you know, at 605 Austin, uh, back, oh, yeah. back in 2019, yeah. and that's, that's a nonprofit, but I was brought on to get that going. Yeah. And then we had started a cookie business right across the street, mm -hmm. bittersweet. So, oh, and then Nexus, oh, geez. Oh, and so then you can, um, <laughs> You've lost track. You, I, I could stand at Startup and, and just kind of do that 360 turn. It was nice. It was so central to all the, I could kind of walk to it all. You know. And now your most recent acquisition, you own yeah. all by yourself on Webster. Yeah. And um, the, was, mo the most like ho hum of all of them, you know, it's like it, it, it's kind of the boring I, one. I right? beg your pardon. It's I, the boring I, I thing. I helped you get that. Actually, <laughs> well, I was did. very excited about that. Project. I was excited, too. My wife is excited. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. It, it was. <laughs> 
you know, it's ho, the, hum, it's the hum. nondescript thing, but it's good. <laughs> I enjoy it. Uh, what do you have over there on Webster? So, uh, yeah, we, we, we bought the Webster storage units, downtown cool. storage units, um, self storage, self storage, 1811 Webster. Um, what I think is kind of cool about it. And I probably honestly, what, you know, it's storage units, but then what it also comes with about a 5,000 square foot building that also has a tenant in there. And, uh, they, uh, her, her name's Kiki and they run an event, event business. They have birthday parties, wedding showers, weddings, and they run that out of one of the buildings too. So it, it's kind of like, I think it's the perfect, if I was going to get into storage units because it's storage, but then there's also a tenant that runs a business that I, you know, I've talked with them several times. They're really, a really cool couple. And you know, they're out there just, they're entrepreneurs and that's, that's what sure. I connect with. So, you know, I'm in the real estate world every day. A lot of people want in the self storage sure. business. It's yeah. extremely pop popular. Yes. And it's extremely difficult to find opportunities for these folks. So why, yeah. why were you turned on about self storage or why were you looking for that? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is, it's one of those really solid things. Um, one of the solid industries that it, it doesn't take too much time and effort there there is work that goes into it obviously and I'm, I'm learning that now but you know when you can kind of get a turnkey property that's that's an, an amazing shape by the way and i don't know if we're going to talk about that but it's like immaculate this place is so clean um the previous owner took care of it just like his baby like it, it is awesome um but it also fits into that zone that i i really do focus on you know i have a lot um going on on webster so that's right at that that edge of that line, um, you know, 17th and 18th Street is kind of the edge of the things that I'm involved in. So it, it fits in the zone. And so I, I kind of I've seen a lot as all these things are growing and, of course, growing around Magnolia and the silos. But, you know, you, everyone's kind of playing their role, too, and improving properties. And it, it just fits in that kind of. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the zone that I'm familiar with. Sure. And so um, I think what I'm hearing is not only did it check the investment box. Yeah, uh, but it, it it's also close nearby some of the things you're already working sure. on. So it, it just kind of help. It makes it, more sense. It, it does if, rather than just purely sure. investment. It's also the only thing uh, at Thanksgiving, and my my father in law is super supportive. He loves all the stuff you know that I that I do, and he loves hearing me talk about escape rooms and all these things. But he's never like, hey, you know, I I'd like to invest in something. He never says it, and I don't ever ask him, except for when I told him we were buying the storage <laughs> unit. He was like, oh, well, should, should I, or should we do another one? <laughs> like, if you find one, let me know, Corey. You know, it was the funny, we were laughing at the table because it's like he, you know, he knows all these other buildings and businesses, but the only thing that really perked his attention was storage units, mm -hmm. you know? So we're on like LoopNet looking like at the state of Texas. And yeah, I'm telling you. It was funny. Yeah, they're so, extremely popular. They are. So that was, that's good. You got a good one. Yeah. Uh, how did you find it? Yeah. Um, I, I think it probably was just online. Uh, I think. Actually, my wife might have been the one that had found it and sent it to me and said, hey, this is, let's look into this, mm -hmm. you know, and then I was like, okay, so I looked at the listing and I said, oh, hey, I know the guy, <laughs> so, <laughs> I know the guy's selling, I think we can go take a look, and I so it was your name on there, Nate, yeah. and so I was like, dude, that's awesome, so I think I just shot you a text and just said, hey, can, yeah. can we go take a look, you know, what do you think? Um, and so usually when I get the go ahead from my boss, you know, uh, to go look at a property downhill, it's, from, let's go. Yeah. yeah I, I waste no time. <laughs> sure. So, um, but yeah, man, we went, I don't know if you and I originally had looked at it. I know. I think it was you, me and your dad. Maybe my it? dad was in town. My dad is always a good, um, evaluation of properties and, and things. He, he just always good to have around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think probably was the three of us. And then we met the owner and got kind of a good, yeah. a good tour of it. And again, just blown away by the cleanliness. I think that's always the thing that kind of catches me off guard with how, how clean and nice it, it looks. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. Your walkthrough thoughts, if you can remember back when sure. we walked through it, uh, what are the things you noticed about the real estate, about the buildings, about the storage yeah. units? Yeah. Uh, when we walk through? Uh, I'll go through the negatives first. Cause I think that's always, I always start there. Sure. So, uh, it's on 18th, which is a one way, uh, which is kind of funky. Um, and the way it kind of sits is, is on the other side of the bridge. Like you, well, you, you go over the bridge and it's just right there in your face. And so you have to really make that turn and you really don't 
sometimes I bet people have driven by this and maybe didn't even know it was there because of the, because the building in front is the one that's leased and then the storage units are behind it. So, you know, visibility is, is whatever. Some people put a lot of onus on it some people don't, but, uh, but that's kind of one of the quirky things. So you kind of get into it, you kind of got to turn around and you turn and all those stuff. So, uh, that's, I mean, of the anything, that's probably the only negative. There, there aren't many. Um, but when we walked through it, I think it was the parking lot size was very um, intriguing. That, that was kind of rare for a place like that, I think. And we might touch on this in a little bit, but the expansion possibilities as well of potentially adding some more storage units um, because that parking lot size is awesome. Um, we don't really have a neighbor to the backside. It, it goes down into the, or the ravine mm -hmm. area, which is really nice there too. Um, but then on the other side, and you had pointed this out to me is, you know, there's some houses back there, but there's potentially some opportunity to expand that way, you know, if we could acquire that land or those houses. And so, um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I like the position of the buildings and how they sit on the lot with that parking lot. I think that was the first thing that, that drew my attention. And he, the, the previous owner, like he, he painted them nice. He like made the doors yellow. Like it was very kind of trendy. Yeah, it looks it was, nice. It was there. cool. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, you know, my, my color scheme was so much as, as gold and black and, you know, so it already kind of fit. I was speaking. Yeah. My, the first tenant that I had personally signed up, um, to get a unit went over there and, and she kno kno knows that about, about the businesses. And she's like, wow, you already had this painted to match you too. And I was like, actually it was like that already. It was so meant to be. it was meant to be for sure. We, you already talked a little bit about the location on 18th and Webster, but uh, did you have any additional thoughts about being close to Baylor or being close hmm. to downtown or kind of yeah. any thoughts on the, lo the location? For sure. Yeah. Um, so storage units have always been a little bit on my mind over, you know, five, six years since I moved back. I mean, we, you know, obviously we pursue and invest in other types of businesses. So, but I've always been aware of storage units. So like the, um, not the findery, but their, the findery warehouse or whatever. Um, my dad and I had looked at that about five years ago, four years ago. Um, and that was a giant climate controlled storage unit with more storage units in the back. And I remember it was for sale, it's like 500,000 and you got the land and you got the lot behind it. And it was just, but at the time my, my brain was so escape room, in, you know, focused. I, all I kept thinking was how can I turn all these storage units into escape rooms, you know, make them room to room and, and turn this into a entertainment, not storage. And my dad was like, well, or you could just do storage units. And I was like, I don't want to do that. You know? And so I remember that, but I remember talking to him about the location is really good. It's down here by the silos and it's downtown and there were, weren't really storage units. Um, then the one on Franklin opened that downtown storage. And so that there's really the only one and that's kind of a bigger one, but it doesn't have that same mm. kind of appeal. I mm. think that the Webster one has. So more units obviously, but so, so yeah, I think the appeal to Baylor, the appeal to being downtown, it does get a lot of traffic on 18th street. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but it's just, can they see it or not? So yeah, that definitely played a role. Um, but I've learned now, I mean, just being in this world for a little bit, I mean, geez, you could even, you know, have one out and you name the town, you know, Cameron, Spiegelville, wherever, you know, Crawford. And I bet they're all doing really well. So it just kind of, I don't know if it really depends on where exactly you're at, but it's good having it downtown because I'm familiar with that. Let's talk about the vacancy uh, and the yeah. occupancy of the units mm -hmm. because when we're when I when the gentleman asked me to sell it, it was my listing. Sure. And so when he asked me to sell it, I think there's like 19 total units over there. It's a smaller complex. Mm -hmm. And self storage is kind of month to month. Yep, it's 19. kind of short term leases. Yeah. Uh, there was about I think there was three empty which is vacant yep means not paying yes there's no money coming right. from no those. money coming in correct and so um what's that look like now for you or what are your goals sure. or how what's your strategy to get those leased or what's that process like yeah for sure um i i don't know i always like having something to sell and this is probably like so counterintuitive like i kind of like having one available and and not that that's the goal right <laughs> you, <laughs> you just you, want you, your phone to ring you want them all full well, it's going to ring anyway. And I, the people I've been talking to, they, some of them are interesting folks, um, of what they want out of these, but <laughs> you can, let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Guy uh, pitched me 500 bucks to live there. Uh, he asked me, well, and that was towards the end of our conversation. He was asking me, is there, is there a bathroom in there? 
And I said, no, there's no bathroom. He goes, oh, well, is there plumbing? And I'm thinking, where is he getting at with this? I said, well, no, there's no plumbing either. So there's no bathroom. There's no plumbing. Okay, is there a way that I can shut the door and lock it from the inside? And I said, I, why would you want to lock it from the inside? <laughs> so I'm thinking, is he going to murder somebody? What is he doing? And he said, he's like, oh, okay, well, what's the hours? Can, and I said, well, it's 24-7. You can get in any time you want, you know. And so he's like, uh, okay, okay, and what's the space? How much room? You know, usually that's where everyone starts. I, 95% of the people ask, how big are they? This guy, that was like his seventh question. How big is it? So I was like, I said, oh, they're the inside ones are, you know, It'll two, the 200 couch. square feet. Yeah, a couch and a TV <laughs> and a mini fridge. Um, you know, and so he's like, okay, well, let me just shoot you straight, man. You know, if I could just live there for 500 bucks, would you do it? <laughs> I said, no, I can't do that. Like you can't, you can't live there. I said, they're not, they're not livable. Hey, at least he was asking for plumbing. That, he was that, asking that's for plumbing. Better than not. Than like picking a corner or yes. something very yes. gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would be worried I couldn't lock it. Like it would always be open or whatever. So that was an interesting call. And for this real estate podcast, you might yeah. have an issue with the, with the city. That's and, true. And, cool. and then all those things You'd completely. Yeah. Like, I didn't know how, how underground this podcast is. Uh, yeah. That would be a whole problem there. <laughs> the, um, so Somebody wanted exact um, height measure measurements, like, and I said, "Oh, it, it's about twelve feet." Was it exactly twelve, or is it about twelve? Oh, uh, I can go measure. You know, it was like eleven, eleven, like eleven feet, eleven inches, or something. Well, it's not quite twelve. It won't work. I'm like, okay, well, what are you wow. storing in there that's twelve feet tall? So, you know, th those have been interesting. But like, I'm used to the like when we started the escape room, the type of calls I used to get back then about you're locking people in a room for an hour, you know, that they were weird calls to when we got started. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, those have been interesting, but yeah, I like having one open. So there's three of it vacant right now. There's still three. There's three. Vacant. There's they've changed a little bit, but there's one on the outside. That's just strictly outdoor, really just best for like parking a vehicle. There, there's no roof over that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. It's, it's one of the two uncovered. Yeah. And then there's two indoor that are currently, so when you say indoor, because there's two climate control, there's climate control, sorry, HVAC, yeah, yeah, climate control. There's twelve climate controlled, five outdoor, and then two open air, open air. Yeah, that's the breakdown. Mm. Uh, what are your future plans for this property? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think I would like to add the everyone wants like ten by ten outdoor, like that's kind of. I could I could probably have sold five or six more of those if I had them, um, and they like that price point of like hundred hundred and twenty a month. You know the the one sixty five to one eighty five for climate controlled, like for certain people they need that, but that's not everybody. So I think in the future, you know, probably in a year from now, we'll kind of see how things shape up. But I think we could add probably another ten units that are ten by ten on the back side of the parking lot. And not eat up a lot of the parking, uh, but increase some revenue there. So that's something we've looked at. I, I think that's definitely part of the future plans to, um, you know, to expand a little yeah. bit at that property. <clears throat> or Nate, you know, we just start knocking on doors to the left side. You know, try to see about that land over there sure. and what's going on. So I love that about real estate is when you buy something and there's value add potential. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of comes with the original deal. Mm -hmm. So if you buy like you did this piece of real estate, but there's there's some yeah. room back there to build more units and more potential income. Yeah. Uh, that often works out really well. For sure. For the owner. Yeah. And those are always, I, I think whenever you, like you said, those value adds are so key. When you kind of get something that's landlocked, even if it's solid, you kind of lose the potential to do more things. So, Cool. That's uh, all my questions. Do you have any more thoughts on this transaction in general that, sure. that we should um, talk about? Yeah. I mean, I would just say the flow of it, you know, um, appraisals are tough to come by right now. And so I think... It, they just take a long time. Yeah. You get them. But so, you know, we had to get that done in order to get the bank um, to approve the purchase. And so that kind of drug it out. You know, I, I kind of felt bad for, for the, for the seller, <laughs> for you know, me. and, oh, I'm in for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually you touched on a really good point. So appraisal, the bank, if you use it financing with a bank, yes, they're required pretty much yep. uh, to order an appraisal, which is a third party vendor yeah. outside of the bank. Yeah. And those folks are backed up, especially now in central Texas, because everyone, everyone's doing mm -hmm. a bunch of things. And so it's taking a lot of time. Yeah. So that person is taking a lot of time, which slows the whole process down. Whole process and, down. And that's what yeah. you and I experienced. Yeah. That. At some point, Nate, you know, 
I'll be money bags and can go in and say, here's cash. I'll Just buy the whole cash. thing, you know, but until now or until then, you know, we, got, we, got, you know, we work with Central National, they're an awesome bank and, you know, but they need to know, right? I mean, is this property sure. worth, worth what they're selling? Yeah. So um, I actually quoted you last night to uh, my, my business partner and friend, Jared. He asked me like, he's selling his house in uh, Nashville. <laughs> That's where he lives. Yeah. And he was, and he was asking, he got his appraisal back, but his realtor said, Hey, I think I can get about 50 more than this. You know, I, I can get like, it, it's worth more than what this appraisal says. And Jared's like, can I get your thoughts on it? He sent me the appraisal and he's like, what do you think? And I said, Jared, I'm gonna quote you somebody. <laughs> I said, this property is worth what someone will be willing to pay for it. Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> Made him bring. So, <laughs> well, I, so I quoted that. you. Oh, uh, okay. That's fine. Can you put a twist on it a little bit so that it can be yours? Oh, like, I'll work on it. Okay. I'll work it, on it's it. worth what they'll willing to buy from the seller. I don't know. You could try to add some <laughs> words in there. So, but yeah. Cool. Good cool. job. Thanks, man. Congratulations you. on your new transaction. I appreciate and you. And also being Thank crowned you. the king of downtown. King, I don't know if how official that is. Yeah, let's. It's pretty official, okay. I think. Maybe if I'm in the Waco in as that or something, then I'll fill. We'll work on that too. Okay, we'll call them. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Nate. See ya. Appreciate it. Hey, Bobby, we're here for another segment of Horner's Corner. What you got for us today? Well, let's see here. Um, I've got several little quick projects I wanted to give updates on. Um, let's start downtown. Of course, everybody's interested uh, in the Magnolia Hotel, Hotel 1928, I think is what they're calling it, and their corporate offices. Uh, the information that I have gotten recently and right before the end of the year is hopefully this first quarter, you're going to see both of those projects get going again. Of course, the, the hotel had started before COVID and that shut it down. So they're going to about, they're getting ready to get that going again. And I believe the corporate office is in the design development stage. So it's going to be, uh, Hopefully in the, in the first quarter, we'll see that starting to wrap up and, and maybe construction get started. So, so that's going to be exciting. Where in, Can you talk about where in town, geographically speaking, both the headquarters and the hotel? The headquarters is at about uh, 900 Franklin, the old uh, Waco Trib building. The, Waco Trib, the newspaper yeah, building. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that's and, kind of in the heart of downtown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Real close by. And they're going to be consolidating a lot of their offices there. So they're going to have a lot of people downtown, which wow. is real exciting for Waco. The hotel is not too far from there, about 7th and uh, Washington. 7th and so Washington. Not rail right down from us here. Yeah, same block. <laughs> right? Same block. So, so also so. downtown, but also kind of like we talked about last show. Uh, but on the, the other side, uh, what do you call it? The west side of town mm -hmm. where everything is a little bit right now centered towards the interstate, towards Baylor, mm -hmm. between Baylor right. and, and, um, <clears throat> in the downtown area. <clears throat> but this is on the other side of downtown, it's still downtown, just on the other right. side. So that's exciting to see once again, that development coming this way. Yeah. And with the, uh, with the conversion of Washington going to two way, that's going to even bring more, more traffic. Uh, over this yeah, way. And I think sure. the uh, business owners are really anxious for that. It looks to be uh, so successful. I believe the city's even expanded it further up Washington or mm -hmm. I guess it'd be south. Uh, they're going to take in a few more blocks. So that's going to be good. Do you know, um, I, I've heard somewhere how many people might be in that, the headquarters building in the Waco Trib. Have you read that anywhere? Do you recall? The, not in the headquarters. Now, the last number that I remember hearing about Magnolia was around 600 employees. Oh, my goodness. So Because uh, that, that building alone with that amount of people walking around there looking for somewhere to go to lunch, uh, yeah. looking for somewhere to go after work, I, I'm just thinking for the, the sake of real estate, how that's going to make an impact. Yeah. And that and uh, places to live downtown. I mean, places, there, it's going to uh, have yeah. a... Uh, it's going to have a major impact. Well, there you go. It's exciting. That's, that's Very great. exciting. Excellent yeah. job. Um, one thing, and I hate to admit this, but I've always heard people talk about Shorty's Pizza 
over at Baylor. Mm -hmm. Now, I must confess, I don't get over there, so I haven't eaten there, but everybody tells me that is a great place to eat pizza. Well, it looks like Jordy's may be coming over to the Hewitt area, get a number, a, a second location. So uh, I'm going to have to try that. Like a new build? or <laughs> No, I think it's a, it's a remodel. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's, great to see, it's great to see these businesses do so well here in Waco that they can start getting second locations. Where are they going? Uh, over there in that, uh, what's it called, La Village Avenue area, La Village oh. Square, that oh, little yeah. area, that little strip yeah. center over there. Nice. So that'll be, that'll be a good addition yeah. over there. Um, I did want to mention um, the Triple B Smokehouse Bar and Grill. Now, that's not in Waco. That's technically in Hewitt area, but that's on the south end of Hewitt Drive. Now, I believe they have a location out in Spiegelville. I think so. That is, from what I saw on their website, currently closed for remodeling. But they've opened this new, I don't know if you remember, but there's a new strip center out there towards the post office on Hewitt Drive toward, mm -hmm. going south. And they built this new strip center. So I believe J Pedals has a place out there. Yeah. And then this is, is the building right in front. So Oh, the standalone. Yeah, the standalone yeah. building. So it's starting to push further south. Yeah. yeah. So, again, that's one of those things you don't ever think about if you don't get that direction. Yeah. But I like to give a shout out to to the businesses that are growing. So yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that's down deal. Hewitt Drive, a little bit past all the the, the dense the high yeah, density right is. now. Yeah, so right. for context, like Starbucks and Walmart and H E B, that's kind of on the other end. Yeah, uh, the, I guess the north end of Hewitt Drive right now. Right. And so they're taking a chance a little bit out there. Right, and, but that uh, is a that is a growing area, and it's one sure. of the reasons. Uh, just a few short years ago, they did that Spring Valley overpass on the interstate. Mm. Because all of that predicted growth that's happening out that direction, so uh, I think it's going to be a great spot, and uh, people are really yeah. starting to starting to to notice that. Uh, okay, I've got to address the big elephant in the room because I get asked about it. I could retire if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me about home goods. Home goods. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, I finally talked to the contractor earlier and. The, bu the building is finished. The space is finished. I actually was over there during the holidays. The lights were on. They've been finished for five or six months. They're just waiting for home goods to come open up. And this is the one, I think we've touched on this before. This is in Central Texas Central Marketplace. Central Texas Marketplace, that's over right. Over there next to, uh, was that Pet Pet Smart or something? Yeah, or Petco, somewhere Pet right in that area. Okay. Yeah, I so um, it's just a matter of them unlocking the door and moving their stuff mm. in. So, so we uh, need to call Home Goods and see <laughs> what the holdup yeah. is. Yeah, or maybe the ladies ought to call. Maybe that <laughs> <laughs> if they get it like you're getting it, they'll yeah, open that's the right. doors. That's huh? right. That's right. Uh, I did want to br give an update too. Uh, I checked with our building official about Amazon. They are still in a holding pattern. Oddly enough. They have some uh, internal uh, equipment that they are waiting on. I, again, I think it's their conveyor systems and robotics. Uh, and it just shows you that as nice as it is for us to order from Amazon and get it quick, they are not immune to all these delays mm -hmm. that a lot of the contractors are facing, regardless of what the business is. So that they're still he he doesn't have any hadn't heard when they might open. Uh, hopefully, this first quarter of this year will see something but uh, but the building's done is the build yeah the building basically is done it's their mm -hmm. internal workings and some mm -hmm. equipment they're having having trouble uh getting um i did want to mention one thing uh down uh, the heb on wooded acres mm -hmm. people i know that's that may be one of the busiest or the busiest one in waco because it is always crowded but uh, people have probably noticed that uh, they've got that big $14 million addition going on and really going gangbusters with that. So that's going to be be really nice. HEB is, uh, understand, from Food and Wine Magazine, the number one grocery store in the United States. And so wow. that is, uh, they're showing it. They've done, they, they do really well. And so it's really exciting to see um, that store it's funny, I was reminded that when that store was first built from scratch several years ago, it uh, 
it costs like $14 million. Well, now this addition is about $14 oh, million. Yeah. That just shows how building materials have gone up. And, of course, they're doing a lot with their, I think, their fish market and really upgrading some nice stuff there in their facade. So giving some other entrances off of Lake Air, too, which will mm. help. So, uh, mm. but anyway, that's, uh, that's neat to see that, that store, uh, Texas proud and uh, really doing, doing that. Um, we are the, uh, I know we've talked about this in the past, the, uh, the Pignetti, Pignetti's, uh, Italian food that yeah. is, uh, being reviewed. So that's, that's going on. And the plans are with the city. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it's being reviewed. I don't know the, the time frame on it, but, uh, uh, I've noticed the, the trucks over there and they're, you know, working on the building. So yeah, that's going to be a great addition to downtown. I had lunch at Pignetti's in Temple with the owner of the building oh, yeah? two days ago. Yeah. Uh, and I asked him and he said, yes, everything's on track and still going forward. Very good. Very good. That, that'll that be an exciting addition. The other thing that I, the, really the last thing I had here to mention is the, it's not building construction, but I know it's something that a lot of people take notice of, uh, you may have noticed the uh, mall-to-mall highway construction work on uh, Loop 340, Highway 6 over there uh, by the mall. Uh, both malls, actually, uh, is underway. Mm. Uh, Weber Construction, who is doing the I-35 improvements, uh, are doing this section, too. So they're already going gangbusters over there. And that is, uh, from what I've heard from our MPO director and others, uh that's probably going to be a, at least a two-year project. So there will be some uh, uh, exciting times if you live over in that mm. part of town, which I do, uh, trying to find ways to get to work quickly. Uh, and then uh, when Amazon does open, that will that'll make it exciting. Yeah. And, and the S2A uh, uh, manufacturing facility, those homes, uh, those homes that have uh, solar power, uh, that's, a, that's a big development right in that same area. So all of that's happening right now, but it's probably a two-year time frame mm-hmm. on that. The other street work, and this is particularly of interest to me because I usually go this way a lot of times coming home, the uh, over there off of Hewitt Drive, Mars Drive, that goes uh, right in front of or uh, right by uh, Midway High School, mm-hmm. cuts over to Texas Central, mm-hmm. uh, that is going to start Monday, January 10th, and... Anybody that's driven that road knows that it's way past needing help. <laughs> so the city's about to start going in and uh, with their contractor, and uh, they're going to completely redo it. Now, it's my understanding they're go- it's all going to be concrete, which is going to be nice. It's going to last for a long time. So uh, hopefully they will uh, – I don't know what – I think they're going to widen it some, but it, it, they're going to replace that uh, – that rough road, and so it won't rattle your teeth when you go good. down. Now, maybe because my old truck rattles. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. In about two weeks, we, sh- we should be driving on it, oh, right? Oh, yeah, is, is that yeah, how that works? exactly. So uh, <laughs> if you do use that route, uh, as my wife normally does, to go to work, you're going to have to find a little bit different way to go, but uh, it's going to be worth I, it. I so, do use that road. I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, but that's really about all I have uh, for this uh, segment. Good. So, That was an excellent version of Horner's Corner. Thanks so much for being with us. You bet. Looking forward to next time. Appreciate it. You bet. You can find me on social media if you search for Nathan Embry CCIM. My website where you can see my listings is kellyrealtorscommercial.com. Waco Real Estate Today is produced by Rogue Media Network. You can find more of their podcasts at roguemedianetwork.com. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.